Hi friends, understanding how the machine learning algorithms works is very important for debugging and improving the model performance and also to explain to the business and non-technical audience. Now, the tree-based algorithms like decision trees, random forest, XG boost, etc. are my favorite class of algorithms. Because with these algorithms, we can visualize the decision maps, we can look what sort of rules the algorithms came up with and when we have a sample, we can visualize what decision path the model has applied. Okay. Now, scikit-learn library, it has its inbuilt uh, tree visualization functionality, but this library called DTreeVis, it has excellent functionality and also uh, beautiful visualizations uh, for explainability and interpretability right another thing about decision trees is they are closest to how we make decisions in our real life for example if i do this uh, what are the likely outcomes and if one of the likely outcomes happen what would happen next right so it is this branch type of decisions uh, is uh, closest to uh, uh, how we also think right all right uh, it's super simple to use uh, just install the library using pip and import uh, the library. Now, I will not go into details of the machine learning algorithms or things like that uh, and the code. So, simply importing uh, the decision tree classifier and the regressor. Now, the process is exactly the same for bagging and boosting based algorithms. Uh, but there, we will simply select uh, which tree uh, we want to visualize using the tree ID. Okay. All right. So here we have the famous uh, Titanic data set. Uh, uh, the objective is to uh, predict which passengers has survived uh, the fatal accident uh, based on few attributes like what class uh, uh, of ticket the passenger bought, the age, fare, uh, and few other attributes. Okay. So this data set, it has roughly about 900 records uh, and 550 of those passengers have not survived. Only about 350 uh, passengers have survived. Uh, now this is standard data preparation stuff. Uh, again, I will not go into details, but if anything is not clear, please uh, do let me know in the comments. I will explain if you are new to data science and machine learning. All right. So here uh, we are initializing our tree uh, with a depth of three. Uh, it is common to have T drip around 10, uh, but again, this is for the demo purpose. So we are building uh, a short uh, tree. All right. And then uh, we initialize the visualization uh, using uh, this model function. Uh, we need to supply our train model and the training data, uh, the column names, and for our target variable, what are the labels? So the perish means those who has not survived and then uh, those survived. All right. So once we initialize this visualizer, we can use it to generate a number of plots, uh, which will uh, explain how the algorithm worked and what sort of rules it came up with. Okay. So here uh, we are visualizing the map and this is just a scale. Uh, how uh, uh, zooming all right so as i mentioned the data set has two classes right so we have those who survived and those who perish and it has about 900 samples and out of which 550 uh, not survived and 350 survived so the survived are represented uh, in green those who not survived are represented in yellow so the tree among all the features given to it it picked up uh, the sex as the most important label in separating these two classes, right? For example, if you look at here, uh, so those uh, passengers uh, with uh, the sex label uh, zero, uh, we have, uh, they are represented here and among them, most of them has uh, survived. So zero means uh, it probably female. So most of the females have survived. Uh, and here uh, we have most of the passengers are male and among them, most of them have not survived. Okay. So based on this information, uh, the decision tree, 
it first came up with this rule. Okay, I'll split the data based on the label using a value of 0.5. Okay, and then all the passengers who has a label 0, they are here. Okay, so all the passengers who are here, they are in this group now. And all these passengers, they are in this group. Okay, and then among these passengers, as you can see, most of them have survived, few have not survived, right? Then the model said, okay, now I will use this P class uh, because it has this clear separation. So the P class, it's also another categorical variable. It has these three categories, right? So whenever most of the passengers who has this P class one, uh, two has survived. And those who have this class value three, roughly half of them survived, half of them not, right? So the model came up with the second rule that I will divide the passengers based on their P class value of threshold 2.5. So all the passengers with the class value less than 2.5, those are grouped here. As you can see, most of them have survived. So this represents these two green bars. And this one, uh, roughly about half uh, each, uh, that represent this one, right? And then among this, there are very, very few passengers who have uh, not survived. So the model again came up with uh, this age value. So I'll separate based on this age value 0 0.42, okay? So that's how the decision tree uh, uh, came up with the rules. Now, these visualization, these sort of not, this level of sophistication we can do using scikit-learn but now we will see what additional visualizations uh, we can do uh, this is just uh, the orientation so if you want to visualize the tree from left to right uh, we can set the orientation to tool uh, lr um, now if we just disable this fancy then what will happen is all the nodes except the leaves uh, those are just represented as rules right so for example first we are dividing the uh, passengers based on their uh, uh, the sex label uh, with a value 0 0.5 and then the p class so and so forth right and uh, towards at the end uh, we have all these uh, leaves where uh, we have the separation right for example this leaf uh, it has two passengers and one of them survived one of them not whereas in this one it has 168 samples majority of them have survived the green color and very few have not survived okay all right and then as i mentioned here we built a tree of depth only three but it is very common to have a, a, a depth of uh, around 10 in such a case it is hard to visualize the tree right so here we can uh, specify what depths we want to visualize so, so here we are saying I want to visualize the layers uh, uh, 1 to 2, right? So the head node, uh, which is this one, uh, it's 0. So this is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3 in our case. So these two should have been uh, uh, focused or zoomed in, right? That's right. And then uh, more interesting stuff, right? I mean, we often want to understand uh, what prediction is made for a particular sample and how it is made, right? So here we are randomly picking uh, one of the sample uh, and the sample or the passenger has these three attributes, right? So their P class is three, the age is four years, uh, the fare, uh, so and so forth. Now, we can see what path or what rules has been applied to uh, this particular passenger, okay? So we provide that sample uh, feature values here. Now, notice we have these uh, sort of these orange lines, right? These red uh, orange type of lines, which is the path the tree has taken. So the map is very similar, but here what it does is it show for this particular passenger, what are its features? For example, this passenger, uh, the sex label is zero, right? So here you can see a small arrow representing this passenger value. So this represents all the passenger data and this represent this particular passenger data. So the sex is uh, label is zero and then P class is three uh, and then this passenger fare is, uh, uh, it's close to zero, is that right? Fare, it's 16.7 because uh, the fare is, uh, has a wide range between zero to 512. 
so the 16 is closer to 0. So as you can see, given these feature attributes, we can see what path it has taken. So first it split at uh, label 0 0.5 and then uh, at P class uh, 2.5 and then uh, at uh, uh, fair uh, for this value. So these two are uh, very close. Uh, uh, the fair split uh, happened around uh, maybe 20-ish and this particular passenger has a fair value of uh, 16. So we, for a given sample, as you can see, we can see which path uh, uh, the model has uh, taken, right? So here again, we have the uh, sample values and the final prediction, right? So in decision trees, the prediction is simply the average predictions of all the samples belonging to that leaf, right? So in this leaf, we have uh, 117 samples. Um, the sample uh, impurity is high in the sense that uh, it still has a good number of uh, both survived and not survived. Um, all right. So, yeah. And then if you want to show just the path, so instead of uh, this visualization, uh, if you want to see just the uh, path, we can do that. So this is the path it, ha it has taken, right? So it's just the same, but uh, excluding uh, the paths which has not been taken, all right? All right. And then uh, we want to explain uh, the path which uh, it has taken, right? Because we have only tree depth of three, we have only three rules here. Uh, uh, we can have maximum of three rules, right? Uh, for example, uh, in some scenarios, it might happen that uh, uh, after applying one or two rules, we might have a, a clear separation, right? So if that path has taken, we don't necessarily need to have uh, uh, three rules for a depth of three, okay? The, we can have maximum uh, number of rules uh, equal to the depth of the tree. So for this particular uh, passenger, these are the three rules applied. First, it checked, hey, is the passenger P class uh, 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 is below 2.5, which is the case. And then uh, the passenger fare is below 23 and the sex label is zero, below 0 0.5. So we can see these, uh, uh, these rules so that we can understand uh, what rules has been applied to a, a particular sample. All right. And then here we have the feature importance again for a particular uh, uh, sample, right? So the sex is the most uh, determinant uh, in deciding uh, whether this passenger has survived or not and followed by the P-class and fair. Now, it also gives a lot of information about these leaf nodes, okay? So in this, for this tree, we have eight leaf nodes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaf nodes and their labels, uh, are like this. So this is 0, 1, 2, and then 3 and 4, these are leaves. So 5 is node, 6 and 7, again leave, 8, 9, 10, 11, this is 12, 13 and 14. Okay, so those are the those are the leaf IDs we have, 3, 4, 6, 7, um, and so on and so forth. Right, now for each node, uh, we can see how many samples are there. But the more interesting stuff is uh, the following two plots. So for each node, we can see uh, how, how many of each categories uh, are there, right? For example, um, this one, leaf node, se leaf ID 7 is the best one, right? Because uh, among all the feature passengers it has, most of them has uh, perished meaning it has a clear separation and also this one right a four if you look at here uh, this is the four so as you can see most of them survived right uh, our objective is to have these leaf leaves which have a clear separation right uh, so that uh, we have uh, good predictions right so this one uh, and also this one we have one sample dominating uh, or one uh, target variable sampling uh, uh, 
dominating over the other one, right? So the guinea uh, impurity will be less for those uh, two classes, right? So and then, um, so here we are looking at the leaf impurity, and as we just saw for uh, leaf four and thirteen, uh, the impurity uh, is very low. Uh, let's have a look at thirteen, which I believe uh, is this one. As you can see here, all the eight passengers uh, belonging to this uh, leaf have survived, right? So the impurity is zero and the guinea score is also zero, right? So that's what we are seeing here. Uh, and then for each node, we can also uh, look at some statistics. For example, if we take node six, uh, how many samples are there? And for all those samples, for each feature, uh, what are its uh, uh, statistics, okay? And also we can visualize uh, the decision boundaries, okay? Uh, all right. To visualize these decision boundaries, to make it easy, uh, here we are loading this Iris dataset, uh, uh, which is another very commonly used dataset. Uh, basically, it has these 150 flowers data. Uh, each flower has four attributes, the sepal and petal, a length and the width. And for each class, we have about uh, 50 samples. Okay, so this is the decision tree. Uh, but what I want to show you is this feature space. For example, as I mentioned, uh, this data set has three classes, right? So this is class one, class two, and class three. Now we are looking at how the decision boundaries are made for a particular feature. So for example, this petal width, right? So what the model has done is when the petal width is below this particular, let's say roughly about 0 0.7 value, we have a clear separation. So whenever the petal width is below 0 0.7, all the samples are belonging to uh, this uh, yellow class, which is this setosa. Okay. And then in the next layer, the tree has made uh, a cut here, a value about 1.7. Uh, we will see here. So the first one is made at uh, 0 0.8 and the second one is at 1.7. Okay. Um, maybe I'll quickly explain this. So we have 150 samples and here uh, the tree has decided uh, petal width is the most important or distinguisher of these classes. So if the petal width is below 0 0.8 and all the samples are this setosa, which is these 50 classes, and above 0 0.8, we have a mix of both a versicolor and virginica, right? So here we have those 100 samples. And then the model split at a 1.75 value. So all those belonging to this uh, below this 1.75, they are here and most of them are versicolor. A uh, few of them are virginica, which are represented in this green, right? So that's how the tree is built. Now uh, we can do the same visualization uh, as a count or the frequency plot, uh, okay? Now, more importantly, we can visualize these 2D spaces, right? For example, here we are looking at both the petal length and the petal width and how uh, the decision boundaries are made, right? So as we just saw, so the first two decisions are made, are made based on the petal width at 0 0.5 and 1.75. So what happens is, so the uh, there is a lot going on here. So the first cut, has made at petal width of 0 0.8, okay? So all these samples are belonging to one particular uh, category. And then the model has made the next uh, cut again using the petal width at 1.75, okay? After that, so this rule has been applied, this rule has been applied, and then this time the model is making use of petal length so the first cut is made at uh, 4.95 and the second one is at 4.85, okay? Now we have these vertical loons. So now this time the cuts are made on the petal length. Now, why we don't have these lines uh, uh, until here, uh, like, uh, uh, like the petal width, right? So when we made cuts on the petal width, so this, those are across all the petal lengths, whereas when we make the cuts uh, on petal length, 
those are not across all the petal width why is the case the reason is when we first made this cut using this petal width all the 50 setosas have been already separated right so we don't need to do any more cuts uh, in this sample okay so that's why we don't have these vertical lines uh, touching this uh, uh, touching this axis okay so as we saw here uh, when it made cuts on this petal length uh, the first one is at 4.95 then the second one is at 4.85 so these are the cuts so uh, we have covered a lot uh, so as you saw uh, this is the best library for visualizing the trees and how the decisions are made uh, uh, what sort of composition uh, different leaves have uh, uh, the feature importances, uh, the decision paths uh, for different samples, so and so forth. Okay. Uh, in the next video, uh, we will analyze uh, a regression problem. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you very much.